Hey, what's up? It's Trent from Frank151 telling you to go fuck yourself. Yeah. <laughs> from New York. Now that we're here, I'm over here with my boy David and my boy Landon. What's up? How are you gentlemen doing tonight? Pretty good. How about yourself? Doing fantastic. Excited to be here. It's Very a beautiful day out. It's a beautiful day out. And nice change. Dude, I cannot <laughs> complain. It's warm. I yep. like to think in the 20s. But, uh, you know, so I guess, you know, we're just chilling over here at the Frank studio. What are we, get, what are we playing later tonight when we're getting home? What are we playing? Well, I got Batman tonight, so that's taking priority. But then <gasps> after, after Shoot. that, <laughs> I might probably, see you there. Le probably League of Legends. Okay. That's, that's a really good point. I'm going to have to go see that movie. I heard it's insane. Uh, I think I'm gonna be playing some Warzone though. I think uh, Warzone's the move. <laughs> Back in the Warzone grind, dude. Yes, I'm with sir. it. I'm with it. So, yes, sir. you know, we're coming in here, right? We got two content creators, right? Millions of views, a lot of people sucking up to it, you know, having a lot of fun with it. You know, what does it mean to be an influencer or a voice for the gaming community as a whole? Don't look at me. He's been doing this for way longer. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. That's, that's a fantastic question. Um, to be a, a voice, you know, obviously with, with uh, a following comes great responsibility um, and how you are perceived and what you're putting out uh, really matters and, and how you portray yourself and your content and your brand, whatever it may be. Um, and uh, having a, a, a strong voice that's, that's impactful um, for whatever you're trying to do, whether it be um, you know, a good message, entertaining, funny content, uh, you know, it, it, you know, it matters. Um, but, uh, I'm sorry, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> We're just talking about, like, you know, the gaming community and just being an influencer and trying to, you know, advocate for this newer generation, the older generation, mm. everything in between. Like, how are you feeling when it comes to this idea of opening up the waves to something new? Okay, so um, I would say, uh, <laughs> shoot, I don't know. So you, little, I mean, you were coming in rusty. tough with that. <laughs> you were coming in as Batman real quick, great power. <laughs> you was going to see in the movie, right? Right. So you started making content, what, Modern Warfare 3 era? So the yes. 2011. Yes, Modern Warfare 3, Black Ops 1, oh, 2010, 2011. Those yes, are the days. Sir. You've now been at it for 11 years. Yes, yes. How much has yeah. it changed? Like, what, what is different now? between what you're doing and when okay. you first started way back when? It has changed drastically uh, in many ways. I would say now the we've seen it go from gameplay and you know simple editing, simple tricks and whatnot to uh, a lot of personality. I think we've seen the, the bridge of just being a gamer to a influencer. Um, that bridge has been uh, fulfilled and uh, seeing what a creator is doing in their lives and their personality, it shines a lot more now than I think that it used to. Um, and it's a lot more personality driven. I think that almost holds more weight than gameplay itself. So you can't um, just be good at the game anymore. No, I mean, in a, in a way, I think you still can, but we're seeing even our strongest players in whatever game it might be, uh, it's backed by a lot of hype, a lot of personality that that's kind of pushing that even further um, because there's so many people that are just good at the game now you can't just just be good at the game uh, unless you're a competitive player but even in that scene we're seeing that you need to have you need to be putting out content you need to uh, post on a plethora of platforms you need to be showing what's going on behind the scenes um, and not just what's happening on the main stage so and I know you know childhood and gaming is just part of my blood just as much as a part Hell of yeah. your guys's, you know? So it's like, I guess I'm curious, you know, how did you guys get your start in gaming? My dad got me a PlayStation 1 back Ooh. when I think I was like four. And him and I used to play a game called Hot Shots Golf together. Like, I've been a golfer all my <laughs> life, enjoyed nice. that route of it. Uh, played that for an extended period of time until I finally got an Xbox 360 and was able to get Call of Duty Modern Warfare with it. Yep. <laughs> played the campaign of that so many times in a row like eight or nine until you realize that oh there's this little port that you can plug in a wire in the back and connect online and then your whole world changes everything opens up you get introduced to the multiplayer side of things and i oh, just yeah. got engulfed and then it was just hours upon hours upon hours of playing nothing but call of duty for years straight so it's like the new age of enlightenment 
Yeah, basically. Like every, <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Yeah. yeah so. Every gamer goes through it at some point. With No matter what game it is, whether it's Call of Duty, whether it's Fortnite, like every generation has their game that introduced them to this world. Right. Now, where, wherever you come in at it, obviously it's at different states, but it's like, we've all had that moment. Guaranteed. I could have mine. I know you've had yours. Mm -hmm. What Was there a moment before Call of Duty that stinks out to you? Uh, yeah, I would say that uh, my early stages of gaming, I was on, just like you said, like PS, PS2. I was playing the Nintendo 64 before that. Uh, what, Donkey Kong, uh, all those like OG games. Um, and mine was like the see-through one. The games were see-through, like the controllers were see-through. You have to take it out, Classic. blow on it. Right, it oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, so I would say that those are my earliest stages, and then that evolved into uh, eventually getting the Wii. And believe it or not, my first Call of Duty game ever was on the Wii. I know that sounds really pathetic, but it was on the Dude, Wii. Call of Duty World at War on the <laughs> yep. Wii. Like yes, lot. yes, you I know, had the Wii was, gun. Oh, I had yeah. the Wii gun. I'm in my <laughs> sure. in my living room with a 50 inch TV, mm -hmm. like 20 feet back, just aiming my <laughs> controller at the TV. Uh, I'm playing some COD 4 until my parents finally got me the Xbox 360, which is like the most iconic console of all time. Uh, and I was a Christmas noob for Black Ops 1 and uh, played Bless that for about soul. a year. What's that? Bless your soul. Bless. Yeah. Thank, thank you. <laughs> got Thank destroyed. You. You, made, you made my holiday season that year phenomenal. I'm Black sure. Urban. I'm Black sure. Urban. I was figuring out how to run still. Uh, <laughs> but that evolved over the year. Uh, I was playing, but I didn't play a whole lot until Modern Warfare 3 dropped, and that was, the rest was history. I mean, it was, that game came out, I was at midnight release, it was pouring rain, uh, and I yeah. sat out there with my coat on, just mm -hmm. drenched. The guy ahead of me, I remember so distinctly, shaking to the point we thought he was going to, like, go into a full-blown seizure. It was insane. Um, and uh, came home that night, literally played throughout the entire night. Uh, and that's uh, really the game that started it all. It was YouTubers like Ali A. Um, oh, dude, Ali A. <laughs> Ali A and Ali A. Icon. We had, uh, you know, Chaos X Silencer and T Martin. Drifter. Um, Drifter. Drifter was my guy, but way back when. Yep, who's actually in Carnage now, which is crazy. Um, full circle, baby. <laughs> full, full circle. circle. Uh, we, uh, you know, watching those, those creators, I was inspired to do more with my time than just sit there in my room and play for hours on end. Uh, and that's where I, I remember running down to my mom and asking if I could uh, get a Blue Snowball microphone mm. and the HD uh, PVR, yeah. Hapage HD PVR, I think it was called. And she stopped what she was doing and I was surprised, but she stopped what she was doing in the moment, went on to eBay, and bought it right then. And bless her heart, because the rest was history. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> and mom's coming in clutch. Yeah, you know? no, like she. 100% of the time. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So, uh, and then I just started creating content, and that's how Carnage originally started was in Modern Warfare 3. I, I'm, I know I'm the old guy in the group. But that's <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. no, no hey, but man, listen, you're looking no. good. You're looking good. <laughs> yeah. I, I got the World of War canteen. Did you realize that they the even, what? they released with World of War a special edition canteen? Word. Really? Uh, you could use, I, I haven't touched it. It's still sitting at home. It just is what it is. But yeah, they had, for every game, they typically had something right. special mm -hmm. edition. Modern Warfare 3, I think. Was it Modern Warfare 3 that had the night vision goggles? I was trying to remember. One of them did night vision goggles, which was insane. I know Modern Warfare did, the new one. Yeah, I think it was Modern Warfare 3 that did it first, it and then they brought it back for Modern Warfare. So. Right, it might have been. It might have been. But Call of Duty Elite, good days. Oh, yeah. The original days of Clam Wars, yep. the beginning of it all is quote-unquote public matches went downhill. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, if they didn't introduce that, I don't... Think we'd be sitting here today so <laughs> did you guys keep up with clam wars like throughout yes. its entirety so i know it extended to what advanced warfare was the final game that i had it i think so i think so we didn't we only did them really in modern warfare 3 though um and we were hardcore because after at the towards the end of modern warfare 3 going into bo2 that's when we shifted to youtube content and making okay. content over clan operations but uh when we started man we had a website we had strategies we were Coming top three, I think, out of like 30,000 teams every single time coming gold. Um, and that's, that's really how we started. And it was, it was fun. It was competitive. <laughs> oh, 
it got sweaty. Yes, it did. <laughs> you'd be sitting there. So, did you ever play Clan Wars? Yeah, I was. I was too young for it. So the way it worked is basically it. you had a set amount of people that you could have on like one roster, okay. and you go in and you just play public matches, but you have to win. Okay. And for sure. every right. win, you got a certain amount of points, and basically there'd be a leaderboard that if you finish the day on top of that leaderboard, you captured a certain amount of points mm -hmm. for like that node. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. It destroyed public lobbies yep. for the weekends that it was. <laughs> yeah, the weekends were hell. You would go in and like it was the closest thing to rank play mm -hmm. before rank play was like formally out with Black Ops Two that yep. ever existed. It was just try hard. If you were not calling out, if you didn't know your maps, <laughs> your spots, everything. You were going at least negative twenty every game, yep. guaranteed. Like it was a for anybody that wasn't in a clan, it was a horrible experience. It was it was tough. <laughs> Dog, I was going negative twenty outside of the clan wars, so I was. <laughs> I don't know about all that Shoot. shit, but hey, don't 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 put me on that. Yeah. But you know, straight. But calling yourself out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm more of a rock band guy. I was a guitar hero okay. nerd. You know, okay. Tony Hawk's pro nice. skater, you know what I mean? Like yep. that's that's where my roots were embedded. So it's like when Call of Duty came around, it was like Black Ops 2 for me, Modern Warfare 3. You mentioned standing out in the middle of the rain. Yep. I did the exact same thing, Modern Warfare 3. Hell Funny yeah. story though, like I was chilling out there with a couple of my boys, like one in the morning, five hundred people rapping around the GameStop. We ended up catching a five guys, right? I wasn't hungry at the time, I was like, I'm gonna save that shit, right? Waited too long, and the burger, I kid you not, froze in the fucking bag. Oh my and god, And that bitch was Jesus. literally an ice cube when I pulled oh the shit out of the bag. Oh damn. And I, you don't believe how fucking pissed I was about it. But bringing it home, I had Modern Warfare 3. So, hey, you know, hey, like, what, hey, what, what, what you the, can't throw it in the microwave, work. you're good to go. Right, yeah, exactly, it was like a pool of water in the microwave, but <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it was cool, dude. Like, yeah, just the memories, the yep. memories, you know. And good so times, I guess, man. Dude, yeah, crazy good times. It, Hurts my heart. You say Xbox 360? I remember bringing that shit Best in. Best console of all time. Best I don't care what anybody says. Time. Best console of all time. <laughs>